The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Nodulator Pro, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Tobin here at the Southwest Ag Conference, uh, joined now by Dr. Seth Nave, University of Minnesota, sir. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. We uh, Now, you're a soybean re researcher, and we're on the Soybean School. We're going to talk some soybeans. And uh, you've had an interesting uh, study that you've been doing. You've been looking at it. You know, that kind of kitchen sink approach to how do we extreme or intensively manage soybeans. You know, tell us what you learned here. I mean, does the kitchen sink work? Yeah, it's a very good question. So yes, and in fact, what we started this work really when farmers were really looking at maximizing yields mm -hmm. at, at any costs. And so um, that's not necessarily what we're looking at today, but we can still look at that data and say, well, if what, what, which of those products that we were using were actually economically viable for us that we should really look at uh, considering? Because when, when we had $14 soybeans, you know, it didn't really matter. We could dump anything on yeah. and, and we were happy with that. So we're in a different situation now. And so it's even, it's our, this kitchen sink approach is even more critical, I think, to understanding what farmers can remove from their system. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we did a number of, of studies over, over many years, multiple states, yep. so uh, nine states in the U.S. over a three-year period, 60-some site years of data. And so tons and tons of data where we looked at individual products, commonly used products, and, yeah. so and requests. Seed treatments, foliar? Uh, foliar, fungicide, foliar, insecticide, foliar, um, uh, fertilizers, bioforge, cobra, nitrogen. Uh, a number of different things, and then all of those in combination with each other too, to see if there's any synergistic effects or additive effects. Um, and really, the take home is that uh, we can bump, dump everything on, mm -hmm. put a couple hundred dollars per acre on, and still only get about four, five, yeah. six bushels, yeah. Yeah. depending on the on the location. Um, so clearly, dumping everything on isn't the, isn't the answer. So then we have to look work backwards and take a stepwise approach at the data and say which of these products was really giving us this yeah. you know the benefit and for the most part I can really divide all these products in, into two groups one is real pesticides with real modes of action mm -hmm. uh, that affect certain pests you know, insects. Whether that's insects or, or fungi um, those things that affect uh, actual pests and then the other things that are marketed as yield promoting factors so uh, many, many different forms of, of yield promoting factors. Um, but any of those things that seem to increase yields, we didn't get any benefit from those. All the benefit came from the yield protection side. Mm. So it gives me the feeling that this, this really, this, this search for uh, products that are going to magically produce yields and, and help that soybean produce higher yields are going to be pretty elusive for us for a long time. Mm. And th there's not, it's not that there isn't hope. Uh, but it's going to be tough. Um, you know, and that always brings us back to the do's and don'ts. I mean, like plant early, invest in seed. You know, we've seen those lists before, and you talked about them in your presentation. We need to do that from an individual sort of field perspective and a farm perspective, and, and, that, and that's okay. And that's great. But my question to you is, hey, you know, again, the kitchen sink doesn't seem to sort of pay off here. Where does soybean research go from here? I mean, like, how do you get the... Um, you know, this crop to the next level. And I, I, I talk to Horst Bonner from Ontario, our soybean specialist, all the time. And he talks, hey, you know, Bernard, he says, I think the next row wave is how do we get the nutrients into the plant? How do we get the plant to take up the nutrients? We know what we need to feed it now. How do we get it into the plant? That's his thought. Where do you think we should go? It's, it's really difficult. There's a, a couple different angles on the question. I'd say one is that it, it's important to remember it's all about water. Uh, and when we're dealing with dry land situations, non-irrigated fields, when that water falls and when we're dry it has a huge impact and that feeds right into the nutrient question is then we have a lot of these nutrients are water soluble and move to the plant through the water. Uh, otherwise we have, we have mineralization going on or not. We have aerobic situations if we have, or anaerobic situations if it's too wet, um, too dry we don't have mineralization. So there's that that fine line of having organic matter and release of those 
uh, those compounds, those, those nutrients, at the right time is critical. Uh, I do think that if, if we were able to irrigate and drip fertilize everything under the, under, the, under the row or do it with a pivot, we'd have a lot of potential. But that's not what farmers yeah. have access to. So we need to work backwards. And really the only thing we can do is set ourselves up and do everything right at the, at the beginning. It's this ba back to basics concept. Mm -hmm. Make sure fertility is good. Um, artificial drainage where we uh, have the capacity to do that is going to be a huge factor and then get yourself set up. Uh, once your yield is in, the yield potential is there, then protect it with those pesticides yeah. I was talking about. Final question for you, I mean, I think you had some research that showed that you know maybe about 5% of producers, farmers, are really getting close to their, the yield potential. They're getting what they should out of soybeans. Does this come back to the producer, you know, intensively managing their crop? And people always say, hey, think about soybeans like corn and manage it with intensity. Well, you bring up a really good point is, yes, we did find that 5% of growers were getting their ma maximum yields, but part of that is just that those guys were the ones that did everything right based on how the weather occurred mm -hmm. within that year. They may have put that foliar fungicide on, and then we had a big stretch of rain during seed filling, mm -hmm. um, and that's how they were able to maximize yeah. their yields. But. Um, we don't know exactly what the combination of factors were that drove that, whether that was partially accidental or yeah. was it just that they, they actually really had an idea of where their limitations were and attacked those potentials. Yeah. Well, you can, you can still do everything right, but you still need environmental cooperation. That's right. Awesome. Hey, thank you for taking the time today. Thank you very much. Awesome.